Okay, I'm going to finish up a little bit. I didn't, I know I went a long time last week. I didn't quite get it all done. So there's a couple things I want to finish up with. And one of them is when we were talking about how to pray the prayer of faith or how to pray in faith, it's based off of James when he says, is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them Pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Not the prayer of unbelief, not the prayer of doubt, not the prayer of disagreement. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. Now, one thing I want to point out here, because a lot of people say, well, God told, I mean, Jesus told the disciples to go heal the sick, but I prayed for them. They didn't get healed, you know, so Let's go back to a, one premise of that is the person has to want to be healed. All right? Yeah. So we can all think it's a good idea to go pray for so-and-so. But did they call? Because the very first thing says, let him call. Let him or her call. Let them ask. If they ain't asking for you to pray for them, then you're wasting your words most of the time. Because if they ain't asking, they may not want or believe in it. It's better to give them the word and build them up in the word and let them understand about the prayer of faith. Let them understand about healing. And then they say, you know what? I think if you pray for me, I'll be healed, right? A another portion of that scripture is let them call for the elders of the church. And I talked about, you know, they have to be in agreement right? They have to be in faith. You don't want to call a bunch of unbelieving people to pray the prayer of faith because they don't even, <laughs> they can't, if they're in unbelief, they can't pray the prayer of faith. If they don't believe in healing, they can't pray the prayer of faith. So it says, let them call for the elders of the church. Well, what happens when the elders of the church are going to pray the prayer of faith? They are in agreement. Y'all awake this morning? Yeah. They are in agreement effective prayer with others must be in agreement you can't have one person praying god heal them if it's your will if not teach them something and another person praying touch them lord and heal them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet um i was reading one of brother hagan's books this week and he was talking about smith wigglesworth <laughs> i wish we had smith wigglesworth around today but he went with us, some ministers to pray for a minister's wife who was sick. And he went in, and so he deferred to the other brother to pray first. They were going to all pray, right? And so he deferred to the other brother, and the other brother saying, Oh, Lord, help this minister whose wife is about to die. Comfort him and help her to pass on into glory. And, well... Evidently, they weren't in agreement because the next one said, oh, Lord, whatever you're trying to teach this dear, this dear minister by letting his wife die, help him to see what you're trying to teach him. And he kept going. And finally, uh, Wigglesworth said, stop it, stop it, shut up, stop it. And he just reached over there and grabbed the woman and said, be healed in the name of Jesus. She jumped up healed. Well, now, which one worked? Yeah. <laughs> so when you're coming together to pray with people you've got to be yeah. in agreement if not you're better off praying for yourself all right mm -hmm. secondly so after posting this i had a comment well this is you know all prayer is, is is talking with god well yeah it's talking with god but you know there's a lot of different things you can talk to god about right mm -hmm. that's why you've got different kinds of prayer and so there are different ways to pray and different kinds of prayer. And if you are, all I've got to say to you is if you are doing well with your prayer life, your prayers are being answered, you're seeing the fruit of it, then glory to God, I'm with you, right? Mm -hmm. But there may be some people out there that don't understand that if they don't believe God hears them and don't know what God's will is, then their praying is just around here. Mm -hmm. So when you don't know the will of God, which the will of God is clearly stated for salvation, healing, prosperity, increase, 
The will of God's clear. You don't even have to ask about that. Lord, if it's your will, save so-and-so. Right. Well, that's ridiculous. That's right. We know it's your will. Yeah. That's okay? Mm-hmm. So all that salvation includes is in the will of God. But if there's other, there's other things involved there, that's where you go to the counsel of God. And you go before God and you're not, you're going before God and you're praying for counsel. And you can do it privately or you can do it corporately, asking for the counsel of God. And if you're praying in tongues, then you're praying the perfect will of God. You're praying mysteries in the spirit. You can never miss it by praying in tongues. Never, 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 never. Now you might be get hauled off if you try doing it out in front of Walmart, (laughs) but (laughs) you can never miss it by praying in tongues, but there are different kinds of prayer. And so there are kinds of prayer that, that require and are helpful with corporate prayer with other people praying with you. But you know what? I don't want every prayer I pray to be a corporate prayer. I want every prayer I pray to be the prayer of faith, but I don't want you in on some of my private prayers. Do you want me in on all your private prayers? No. And so there are many different kinds of prayer and we need to, understand which ones are need to be applied at the moment but they all need to be in faith if you're seeking the wisdom and counsel of god and asking for it that's the prayer of faith i ask for wisdom for this situation and i believe that the word of god says that it will be given to me all right okay so let's move on to what we're talking about today which is sort of a continuation. It is the prayer of agreement and the prayer of binding and loosing. So let's go to our first scripture today, with this, which is Matthew 16 and verse 19. And I'm reading out of the ESV version. I tell you what, I do this all this all the time. Back up, back up, back up. Jesus has just said to Peter, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter in verse, uh-oh, 16 replied you are the christ the son of the living god and jesus answered him blessed are you simon barjona for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven so this revelation that came to peter was a revelation it was revealed by the father to him you can't figure this stuff out in your head So Jesus turns around and he says, and I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock, I will what? Build my church, my ecclesia, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And we're going to come back to that. And then he says, how will it be that this will come to pass that the gates of hell won't prevail against the church? How is that going to happen? Well, the first thing that happens is what, <laughs> in my mind, is what I, I, I was always quoting this scripture, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I used it in a defensive manner, all right? The devil's after me, and he's not going to prevail. But how many of you have ever seen gates running down the street? <laughs> I mean, that's not the idea here. The gates won't prevail against it he's you get the key to it in the next verse which is verse 19 of matthew 16 i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven now how many of you have heard that scripture before just Robert and Gary. Okay. You've heard the scripture before. I know you have. Okay. So he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of actually that is plural. The kingdom of the heavens, the kingdom of the heavens. What are keys? Keys Give the power to open and shut. Right? The power to open and shut, which denotes authority. 
So he's saying to Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, when did he do that? Did he do that right there at that instant? No, he didn't because he had to first be crucified, die, and go get those keys of hell and death from the devil. Are y'all here? Do I need to read the scripture on that? Okay. He had to first go get those keys. So once he obtained the keys, what did he do? He turned around and gave it to his body. Who holds a key? How do you hold a key? In your hand? How many of you hold your house key with your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Only when you're about to drop something, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> What do you hold your key with? Your hand. Is your hand in your head or your body? body. It's in your body. And we are the body of Christ. So who has the keys of the kingdom of heaven and the power to bind on earth and loose on earth? Who has that power? The body of Christ. He didn't just give it. Oh, some people believe that it was Peter, you know, the first Pope head of the church. He's the one that had the keys. And now that he's dead, well, nobody has the keys. Nobody knows where the, it is. It's kind of like the lost Ark or the sword. Is it Excalibur? You know, <laughs> nobody has the key to, oh yeah. She, it, if Jesus said it, do you believe it? Yes. Yes. I give you the keys. I give you the ability and the power to open and shut. I give you the authority. I entrust it to you. The keys of the kingdom of the heavens. Now, the interesting thing about this is there's two different places we're talking about here or two different concepts. Number one concept is earth. And the word there is not cosmos. It is G-E-S, which is the physical earth. If you are on the physical earth, you have the power on the physical earth to bind and loose. So whatever you bind on earth is also bound in the heavens, plural. What does that mean? Heavens, plural. Okay, so as I'm studying this, I I mean, I could go off on so many little dog trails and stuff because I want to know about everything. You know, when I go, what does that mean? (laughs) I always found something fantastic. So it says here, the heavens being plural, it says it is used nearly. Now this is, uh, I got this out of uh, one of my study, I think it's Bible one Bible gateway. It's another one of them. But anyway, it says from um, a quote from a man very versed in the scriptures and in the Greek, it says that the plural is nearly as often used in the plural heavens. The singular and plural heaven and heavens have distinct overtones and therefore should be distinguished in translation though unfortunately they rarely are what does that mean that means as they breeze through and interpreted it they most of the time just said heaven well heaven is heaven because our concept of heaven is it's some place far off and you know so we just have that mentality and yet this is untrue there are more than one heavens And so when it says the heavens, we know specifically of at least three heavens. In which of them is God present? Well, I believe God's present in all of them. (laughs) I told you. Okay. So here he's saying you have the power on earth because whatever is bound on earth is bound in the heavens. And the keys are to a gate. What is a gate? A gate is a portal, right? Everybody know what a portal means? It's a way to go through. Okay? So here on earth, the keys of the kingdom that Jesus gave us was a portal 
right up through all the heavens. It didn't say one, two, and three. It said all the heavens. How many heavens are there? We know there's three for sure. There's a some kind of idea there's seven. Have you ever heard to say, oh, they were in seventh heaven? Have you ever heard somebody say that? So there's some kind of concept that there's seven heavens. I don't know exactly because the scripture doesn't say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the scripture definitely says one, two, three. It says three, and there's one. So there has to be a two in between, right? <laughs> Everybody go, one, two, three. All right. So these keys that you have right here of the kingdom open a portal through the first heaven, the second heaven, and then into the third heaven for certain. So what does that mean? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will loose in heaven. Let's go up to Matthew 8. Notice Jesus has said this more than once. This must have been important. You getting that idea? This must have been something important here. Verse 18, truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I'm going to stop there and not get into the agreement part yet. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What does that mean? Well, easily, it means that whatever you bind here on this earth means that it goes all the way up to the heavenly level and is legally enforceable by heaven. Have any of you ever heard of a non-binding agreement? Have you ever signed anything that says, warning, this agreement is binding? <laughs> you ever signed anything like that? So there's binding and non-binding agreements <clears throat> here on earth in the natural realm where you can sign something on a piece of property and you can say, well, it's my intent to buy this property, uh, but we're going to have to investigate a couple of things first. So I'm going to give you a some earnest money just to take a look at it, okay? And that's going to hold it so you don't sell it out from under me. But it's not binding. If I discover something I don't like about that property or something happens, I can say, mm, nix it. Now, you may or may not get your money back depending on what the agreement right. says. But it's not binding. It, it's, a, it's an intention. So... Uh, help me, Lord, get this across. So a lot of times you can say things here on earth that are non-binding. For instance, binding agreement, which heaven recognizes totally, is the marriage agreement, the marriage contract, the marriage covenant. It is a binding agreement, and this is how this word binding is used Throughout the New Testament is it's talking about something that is legally enforceable. The difference between, <clears throat> excuse me, a non-binding agreement and a binding agreement is the binding agreement is legally enforceable. You can go to court and they go, yep, I see it's written upright. You two agreed to it, so therefore it's legally enforceable. And the person that backs out doesn't make the payment like on the mortgage on your house then they can go before the court and say, we're foreclosing on this property because they didn't make their payment. They didn't meet the terms of the agreement. Okay. So it goes before the court. And so that's a binding agreement that can be enforced legally. Well, guess what? God is a God of laws. They're spiritual laws, but they're laws. And a lot of people don't understand the point here that when Jesus uh, is talking and when Paul is talking, he says, he says, are you loosed from a wife? Don't seek a life. wife. Are you bound to a wife? Don't seek to be loosed. So he used that term bound and loosed in reference to the legal marriage covenant. And so when a person makes a vow or a covenant here on earth, and has the, is holding the keys of the kingdom, 
How many of you are doing that? You have the keys of the kingdom. You're born again, filled with the spirit. The spirit of God dwells in you. Jesus is in you. So when covenants are made here on earth, they are legally enforceable by heaven. That's why divorce is such a big deal. It's not like you didn't make your house payment. And you went before the court and they took your house. That's terrible. You know, they took your house. This really is awful. A lot of people lose their properties over things. But a covenant and an agreement between two people on earth not only stands on earth, it stands legally enforceable in heaven. So in, or, in order to loose that, the two people who agreed have to agree to loose. And what does the word loose mean? I think we always pictured the binding and loosing, being bound by chains or, you know, something like that. But it actually means legally enforceable and loose means to annul or dissolve. So you decide to dissolve that covenant of marriage. It takes agreement between two people and that goes all the way up to this realm. And I know that there are some churches that believe that that you're always married in the sight of God. There are uh, different religions that interpret this. But as far as it says, whatever you bind or loose on earth is also loose in heaven. So the things that you're doing here on earth, you think, oh, well, it's when we get to heaven, da, 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 da. What you're doing here on earth is being recorded in heaven. And the courts of heaven are seeing what you're doing. So anyway, a marriage and divorce was just the easiest way to talk about the power of of binding and loosing. All right, let's go to the two of you agree in, where was I? Matthew chapter 18. This keeps slipping down. I don't know if I'm hitting it or what. Okay, he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, Let's move on. I don't want to get sidetracked here. Again, he says in verse 19, this is a continuation. He didn't say verse 19. <laughs> <laughs> he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, 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 I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. If two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, two of you agree. What does the word agree mean? It's very interesting. The word agree is... The Greek word, S-Y-M-P-H-O-N-E-O, sum, if, ne, sum, I can't read my writing. <laughs> okay, anybody ever heard of a symphony? Yeah. That's where that word comes from. If you, any two of you symphonize, symphonize, it comes from the root words S-Y-N, which means with, and P-H-O-N-E, which means voice, with voice. In other words, if any two of you on earth say the same thing, be careful what you get people to agree with you on. That's good. Say the same thing. How many people do you think are saying the same thing about a political situation in the earth? today how many people do you think symphonize say the same thing well i don't know the people that are not believers are not believers then they don't have the keys of the kingdom so where what direction is is uh is theirs going and what see look take a look at this just think about this what what are people where from where are people being inspired to speak and symphonize and agree? <clears throat> there is the inspiration of the kingdom of heavens 
and there is the inspiration of the kingdom of hell. So, you add your power, your legal agreement, and you file your documents in the courts of heaven to be filled here, or you file your documents in the courts of hell. And what do you think theirs is like? Yeah. I don't really think it's that organized other than it's destruction. Mm -hmm. So when you're speaking words of destruction, you're speaking from the wrong place, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's back up. Take a look at it again. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, the power to open and shut the kingdom of the heavens. Does God have the keys of the, did God, let's say it this way, did Jesus have the keys here when he said this? No, he didn't. But after he died and he was taken here, he took these keys, he handed it to us, and now we have the keys through the portals of heaven, and we have the keys here also. Why? Because it says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Because you can take these keys of the kingdom and you can release people's lives from the pit of hell. You can release people from the pit of darkness. You can prevail. You can, Jesus said, Jesus raised people from the dead, the keys of death and hell. Amen. I know. Wrapping your mind around this is a challenge, but don't listen to your head. Listen to your spirit. Listen to your spirit. Listen to your heart, what God is saying to you. Just as Jesus was victorious and he came forth from death, hell, the grave, and was resurrected, and he gave us the keys, did he give us a different set of keys? No. He gave us the keys that he obtained. Adam, right here, in Genesis, handed over the keys that he was given to this earth and his access to heaven, and he handed it over to the devil, to the serpent. He gave his dominion and his power. He gave what he had over to Satan. And then Satan, it says, became the god of this world. So now who has the keys? He did. But once Jesus came as a man and he died a sinless life, he lived a sinless life, he died and he went here, he was held illegally and he took the keys of hell and death. And when you read the book of Revelation, what does it say? He comes in and he has the keys of hell and death. Does, has anybody read that in the book of Revelation? Oh, yeah has the keys of hell and death. And where does he hold it? In his hand. In his hand. And are we the body of Christ? Yeah. Are the hands in the body of Christ? So this is what the devil doesn't want people to know. He wants people to still be deceived that he's the big bad devil and he can do all this stuff and that he will prevail. But Jesus said, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said specifically that this will not prevail against his church, against his group of believers. The question is, when are we going to believe it? When are we going to start believing this? And this is why I want to put this power, the power of this knowledge in the hands of the people. Because when the body of Christ, the ecclesia, the church built on the rock of Jesus, comes to the revelation, comes to the comprehension comes to the light of the fact that we truly hold the keys of the kingdom of the heavens and are not blocked by anything because the courts of heaven stand behind us. Then yeah. it's yeah. the end. Yeah. Yeah. Not for us. It's the end for him and his kingdom. Amen. That's why he doesn't want us to accept this. He, do, he wants to, he's like, oh yeah, but we're not God. No, we're not God but we have God on the inside of us. No, we're not perfect, but the perfect one died for us and handed us the keys of the kingdom of 
heavens, all the heavens, all the access of the heavens. That's the power of agreement. So when I come to Judy and I say, will you agree with me? And she's going to want to know, well, what are we praying about? I've had people write me and say, well, you agree with me that this, that, and other. And I'm going, well, I don't know. That's the will of God. And you say, yeah, but the will of God is healing, salvation, prosperity. Yeah. And then upon those concepts, I totally agree. Healing for the body. But when you start asking out beyond that, what do you need to do? Come on, paper. You need to. Supply counsel. When you get out beyond this and somebody says, I want you to agree with me about buying this, buying that. I, I want you to agree with me that this guy will marry me. This woman will marry me. And it, people will even say, I just need you to agree with me or something. Well, what is it? Well, I can't tell you. Yeah. Well, then I can't agree. Right. How am I going to agree when I don't know what you're talking about? That's right. When you don't know, it's where you seek the counsel of God. When somebody comes with me to me and says, agree with us that we'll get this piece of property, I say, well, tell me a little bit about this. You know? Has God re put, really revealed this to you? I mean, there are just some things you need the guidance and the counsel right. of God on, and some you just already, the guidance and counsel's right. been revealed. Amen. Amen? All right. Got to have to finish up here. So, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heavens. It stands until you say, I annul it. I've had to annul things I've said. Are y'all still here? Yeah. You look at me, you don't think I've ever said the wrong things? Yeah. <laughs> I've said things. I've spoken things out of whatever, and I've had to come back and annul Oaths, vows, things. I tell you what, I'll never. That's an oath and a vow. Right? And there's always somebody around that say, yeah, I agree with you. I wouldn't do that either. All right, now what do you got? Agreement? <laughs> Guess who's going to enforce that? Did you see my finger go down? Can the camera see my finger? Guess who's going to enforce that? So I made a vow with uh, with hell or Hades or death or destruction or I spoke words of death or destruction. And so now what am I going to do? I'm going to annul and dissolve what I said because it was wrong. I'm on, that's the wrong side. I'm going to annul that. And since I have the keys, I can shut that door. I can shut that door, and I'm talking to somebody listening out there right now. I can shut that door when the the devil, hell, inspired somebody to tell you you'd never make it. You'll you'll never do a good in life. You'll you're lazy. You're this. You're that. You're just blah 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 blah. You have the keys to shut that door from hell in your life. Shut it. You have the key to do it. But that's my past. Did Jesus say, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven only for a limited time? It's the, Remember our concept of time? Past, present, future? You can take the keys of the kingdom and and shut that voice that happened 40, 50 years ago Amen. and stop it and Amen. replace it with the voice of the word of God. That's good. And then you what? Agree, which is a symphony, which comes from with and speak. Say the same thing that God said. When you say... What Jesus said about you when he was here on earth and he gave us this word, when you say that, when you pick up this little book on God's creative power for healing, this is, these things are what God said. This is my dad quoting what God said and telling you how you can agree 
with what God said. You set yourself in agreement with the word. And when you set yourself in agreement with the word, do you think God agrees with you? Yes. Well, he's already said it. Yeah. And so you, you get into a symphony with God of what he said about you. What did he say? I'm healed. Mm-hmm. You don't understand. I'm sick. I feel bad. He said you're healed. Yeah. But I don't feel good. But he said you're healed. Mm-hmm. Oh, but my head hurts. But he said you're healed. Oh, but I don't know. I just I prayed and it didn't happen. But he said you're healed. At what point are you going to rise up and say, he said I'm healed, so I am healed. Symptoms dissipate, go away. Body, get in line with the word. I talked last week about my immune system. That's when I directed to my immune system. Get in line with the word. Thank you, Lord. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is in my immune system. It knows good from evil, right from wrong, and it effectively destroys every pathogen and abnormal cell in my body. Well, that's not in the Bible. He himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. He made me whole. If he made me whole, then my immune system is whole. My immune system is well. It functions perfectly. Agree. Have a symphony with God. All right, let's, let me catch this up, and then we'll conclude here. The earth, when he says, the keys of the kingdom of the heavens, the power to bind on earth and bound in heaven. There are places in the New Testament that you read where it just talks about heaven, and it talks about the air around the earth the atmosphere around the earth. There's a second heaven. There's a third heaven where it says God's throne is, okay? So where I found in the New Testament so far, and it's been pretty extensive research, when it talks about the heavens, it's the scriptures where it says, a voice from the heavens came saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When uh, Stephen was testifying, and he said, I see the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He wasn't talking about the air. He wasn't talking about the second heaven. He was talking about this portal opened for him. This portal opened for Stephen. He said, yeah, that's just for the apostles. That's just for... Um, Jesus, that was just for Peter, the first people. Uh, Stephen served tables. He was a deacon. Deacon means servant. A deacon had a portal straight into and could see the throne of God. Do you think that that means that what Jesus said is very true. I give you the keys of the kingdom of the heavens straight through to the portal. Anybody remember Jacob's ladder? Mm -hmm. The angels ascending and descending on that ladder. So, keys to remember. That was a play on words. (laughs) You have been given the keys You have been given the power to open and shut. Say, I have the power, the the authority 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 to open and shut. shut. The portals to heavens heavens. and the portal to hell. And the the only reason I open the portal to hell is let people out. Otherwise, when it opens up, I shut it. I shut it. I had the opportunity to do that today. No weapon formed against me would prosper. I know where this attack's coming from. Stop it. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm not moving off of what I know the Word of God says. That's how you shut the portal of hell. You shut it. Okay, so you have the power to open and to shut. You have access to to the heavenly things of God. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has opened to us all things that we need here on earth. 
We also have the power to declare things to be unlawful and prohibit. So when I go to Judy, I say, I want you to agree with me. I'm going to pray right now. And here's what I'm going to pray about. And I tell her I'm praying to, let's say, uh, shut the, uh, stop the attack of the enemy against a certain person or whatever. All right. And I tell her what it is. Well, she knows that's the will of God, right, Judy? Right. So we pray, I pray, and we finish, we say amen. And we have just established it here, right here. We've done it. We agree. We're in harmony. And if we need to dissolve something, then we dissolve it to annul it. There are times when things have to be annulled and can't get into that at this moment. But there is the power of binding things and loosing things. And okay, quickly, (laughs) quickly, quickly. You remember Paul, the church of Corinth? He says, you've got a problem with somebody in your midst when you come together with my spirit. I'm not there. When you come together in that church with my spirit, my spirit's going to be present with you. And I want you to deliver such an one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that their soul might be saved. On what level did that take place? That took place on the level of those in the church that were instructed by the apostle to do this thing. And that was the power of binding and loosing. And what happened is they loosed that man from that church, from the protection that that church encapsulated him in. In other words, it was sort of an excommunication. But when you're in a group and a body of believers like we are here at CAPS Ministries, <clears throat> my faith... And the power of God, the anointing of God, my faith is here and it is available to you. And I stand with you and I pray a protective covering over you. you, And so Paul did the same thing with this church, but it came to a point that this man was rebellious and he wouldn't do what he was told and he was causing problems in the church, the the sins that he committed. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, I want you to loose him, take him out of the protective covering and loose him, deliver him to Satan. He's already living for the devil. Let the devil have him. And so when they did that, then they, they weren't rude to him. The Bible says, let them be as a heathen and a publican, that you don't mean the heathens and publicans. You just don't bring them in the church, Mm -hmm. set them on the front row and acknowledge them and tell people to vote for them. Amen. but you love them right yeah. and so the man eventually repented and was restored to the church so anyway I don't know how I got off on that I just did so the things to what are the things to remember somebody say it keys, keys. keys. binding and loosing binding. and agreement 